Hi, I'm Brian Holt, a product manager at Stripe, and welcome to the complete Intro to React version 8. I created this course to help you go from zero to proficient using the community's best tools. In this course, we'll cover core React concepts like hooks, effects, and components, as well as libraries like Vite, React Router, React Query, and as well as the dev tools. I hope you enjoy the course. This is about the simplest React app possible. This is, this is the hello world of, of React applications. So next thing, let's get this out of a script tag on a page. Uh, so I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to make a new file here inside of source. And I'm going to call it app.js. And I'm going to save that. And then back here in my index.html, I literally, this is unmodified uh, here in app.js. And then here I'm going to put in this script tag source equals dot slash app.js. OK. That should be slightly less offensive code now. So back here in app.js, let's make another component. This is a pet adoption app, so we're going to make a pet component. Be another function. It's going to return the results of uh, react.createElement. And it's going to be a div. It's going to have nothing there. And then we're going to give it an array of components to return. So react dot create element, give it an h1 uh, empty object, and we're going to describe one pet individually. So this is going to be like, we're going to do my dog, which is Luna, but you can put whatever you want there. Uh, and I'm going to just copy and paste this because it's relatively the same thing. And I'm going to make this an h2, and I'm going to make that an h2. Luna is a dog and her breed is she is a Havanese. So another, so we have this pet component. Again, we've created the rubber stamp, but we haven't actually used the rubber stamp, right? So we have to go use it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, this is just a function at the end of the day, right? You have to use the function or else it doesn't really do anything. So, and then you'll notice here, instead of just the uh, result of one react.createElement call, we've given it an array of that, which is totally fine. React knows how to handle that, right? Just so you know, this is just trivia that you don't need to know. You actually can just give it like multiple uh, parameters here, and it'll also know what to do with that. It's variable arity, if you want to use the computer science-y term for it. But what React will do for you under the hood, it does put it in an array. So I'm just letting you know that it's in an array. Again, trivia. You can just go ahead and let that go out the other ear. It doesn't matter. OK, so now I have this. And I'm going to make this in an array here as well, because we're going to use a bunch of pet components. OK, and let's just put three pets in here. So I'm going to say react.createElement and pet. So again, I made this pet rubber stamp, and I just went and stamped it three times inside of app. And then app is going to be rendered out here to the root. So one of my favorite exercises when I write code like this is I ask myself, when I go back to the browser, what am I expecting to see? Because it forces me to think through logically the, the code that I've written. Let's just start from the end and work backwards. Yeah? We have app, right, which is being rendered out to the root. So we have our app component. This is going to be rendered how many times? It's once. We're going to see an h1 that has an adopt me here at the top. That's going to be inside of a div, right? 
and then we have used the pet component three times. So how many times is it going to say Luna on my page? Three. three. Dog three times, Havanese three times. Total, I'm going to have four H1s, right? One of these, three of these. And I'm going to have, what, six H2s? And inside of, uh, and I'll have, what, four divs. OK. So now if I refresh the page here, you can see I have Luna three times, Dog three times, how many? Matches up with my expectations, yes? We have Animal. When I select Bird, I want to have a, a drop down of the correct breeds, right? So that I see Parrot, African Grey, Macaw, things like that. So we're going to build a custom hook to do that for us. We could totally just put in like a another use effect here and just do that directly from within search params. But I want to show you how to clean this up and make it like really nice and makes it like a little reusable hook for us so that we can say instead of use effect request from API, blah, 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 what we can actually do is say use breed list and we give it the animal and we get back a list of breeds. It's going to be really nice. So what this is going to do is it's going to take in an animal if it's seen the animal before, so if I do like dog and then I switch to cat and then I go back to dog, it's going to serve it from whatever from, from cache, right? So it's going to do like, all right, uh, I got poodle and Jack Russell Terrier back, then I switched to cat and then I came back. Chances are the breeds, they haven't invented a new breed in the past 13 seconds, right? So we can probably just give them back the same list, right? Therefore, we're doing this local cache maneuver. So I'm going to say const breed list set breed list equals use state of an empty array. Const status set status. This is so you can like give back like I'm unloaded, loading, loaded, right? So that someone could like show different loading states based on that and the use state, and then by default, it's going to be unloaded. OK. We're going to do a use effect. So if no animal, so if no animal, set breed list to be empty array, right? If they pass me an empty string here, or null, or undefined, I have no breed list, just send it to be an empty list. Else if local cache, if I've seen it before in my local cache, then set breed list to be whatever is in local cache. Okay. Else request breed list. OK, here, inside of the use effect, very essential here, be inside of the use effect, async function request breed list. So we're going to write the function that we call here. Set breed list to be empty. And set status to be loading. OK, from here, const res equals await fetch http colon slash slash or s I think it works on both SSL and not pets dash v2 dot dev dash apis dot com slash breeds and then animal equals animal so we're going to request from this API that Front of Masters runs uh, a list of breeds. Const JSON equals await res.json. OK. Local cache equals of animal. So we're going to save it. If we call request breed list, this means that we didn't have it before, so we want to save it. 
equals json.breeds. And if that doesn't exist, then just send, set it to be empty array. Set breed list to be local cache animal. And then set status to be loaded. Okay, so now we have this huge eff effect. When does this effect rerun? When what changes? When animal changes. Every time that the animal goes from dog to cat, we want to request the new breed list again. Yeah? So, run this whenever animal changes. And then at the end, you're going to return breed list and status using the same weird tuple, tuple uh, methodology. I told you that custom hooks are basically just other hooks packaged together, right? So we called use state and use effect a couple of times in here. And then we're packaging this up so that now later, all I have to do is say use breed list instead of blah, right? So I took like a really ugly bit of code and I encapsulated it. This is now testable, reusable, and now I can have this really nice uh, black box that I feed an animal and I get back out breed lists. And now I can go back into search params.jsx and I can say, import use breed list from use breed list. And instead of having breeds here, I can just say const breeds equals use breed list animal. And voila, I will always have a correct breed list now. Let's just go make sure that I'm not making stuff up, which I am want to do. Bird, I get all these nice looking birds back. I change this to be cat, get cats back. And if I go back to bird, let's just look at our network tab just to make sure that our caching is working correctly. Uh, trash that. All right, so now I have animal. If I go to dog, I expect it to make a request, right? It does, right there, you see it. If I go back to cat, okay, it makes one. If I go back to dog, I expect it to not make a request, right? It didn't, and yet I see all the dog breeds here. It's useful that this is in a separate file because now this is super easy to test, right? It's also, this would be useful outside of React query, right? This is just returning a method that if you call and you give it the correct query key, it's going to give you back the correct response, or it's going to give you back the result of a response to an API. Also cool, right? So th that's another thing I appreciate about React query is it makes all the individual async parts of your code individually testable. It's always a positive thing. Okay, so let's go use this in details now. So we're going to import use query from at tanstack react query and import fetch pet from fetch pet. And we're going to say up here const results equals use query. So this is how use query works. We're going to give it a key of what we're requesting. So the first one we're going to give it is like the general overarching term. This is the details type of request. And then I'm going to give it the ID. This is the query key that's going to be provided to fetchpet.js. So when I'm pulling off the query key right here, that's, the, that's where I'm getting the key to make the correct ID, right? It's coming from here. And then I give it this details. This could be any arbitrary caching key, right? And that's all this is, like the same sort of idea of like what you provide to Redis or memcached or something like that, right? 
So this is basically say like, all right, store it here in your cache. So then it knows later, if I request the exact same key later, I'm going to get the exact same response. It's not going to go fetch that from the API again, because I gave it a, a, a cache time of infinity. Okay, and then I say, if you don't have that in your cache, run this. If you don't have details 5 in your cache, run fetch pet, and it'll go get it for you. Now I have results. That's going to be the results of whatever I have. I get to write this code that looks very synchronous, right? which is super cool to me. The first time this comes back, it's not going to have the available that cache, right? So it's going to give me back something. Notice I did not await here. You can't await in a render function. So it's going to give me back results is loading. And I'm going to say something like return div class name equals loading pane. Huh, Freudian slip there. H2 uh, class name equals loader. And you, I just give it something that you want to spin. I, ha I gave it a spiral. But put it some sort of emoji there that will, it'll just spin, right? So if it's loading on first load, it's just going to show that first, right? This is awesome because now I don't have to have like these big complicated things like, all right, if this is happening, do this. If this is happening, do this. Immediately the user is going to see something loading. And then as soon as fetch pet completes, it's going to go and re-render with the correct information. So it short circuits here, right? And I don't have to worry about after this. I can now assume past here, pet is available and pet has loaded. So I can just say const pet equals results dot data dot pets zero, like that. Because that's the shape it comes back from in the API. And now I can say div class name equals details, another div, h1 pet.name, h2 pet.animal, uh, pet.breed, pet.city, comma, pet.state. I don't need those dollar signs. OK. Then we'll put a button there. It's pet adoption site, right? So you're going to say adopt pet.name, a call to action. And then we'll have a paragraph underneath that with the pet dot description. Okay. Let me make sure that I'm not out of line here. So if I click on Luna, you saw that I had like a nice little spinner there for just a hot second. If you want to see that a little bit longer, it just looks like this, right? OK. And now we have this you know, button that doesn't do anything, but we have a more detailed uh, pet page, right? But how cool is this, right? So I get to basically treat this like a synchronous hook, but it's fetching from an asynchronous API. And then I just have to do some bifurcation of like, if it's loading, do this. There's, a, there's other things here, like there's uh, results. Dot, and you can see here there's a is error, is fetched, is fetch after mount. They give you a bunch of flags that you can check. Or you can also just look at status, right? Which will have like a, a text if you want to do like more of like an, a switch statement or something like that. There's also a, 
Like if you want to like manually yourself call, call refetch, you can just say results.refetch, and this will actually go back out to the API if you think it's stale and, and refresh it. There's a bunch of stuff. React, React Query is a really cool piece of software. We're not going to really scratch much more than this, but honestly, this is pretty cool already. Like, I think this is better than a use effect, right? This is more readable than a use effect, according to me. And here's the cool part. Again, looking back at our network tab. So, all right, I'm going to click on Luna. You can see here I got the pets ID here. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to click on Luna again. Notice that it does not refresh Luna, right? It's keeping that in the cache. But if I go back and click on Buna, you see the pet ID there too, right? But I'm going to go back to Luna. No refetch. Pretty cool, right? Notice that every time I go back to the home page, I am refetching the general pets you know, search page. That's because that use effect is always running, right? Doesn't care that it's already fetched that before. It's just always rerunning that. So I don't know. I, this is pretty compelling to me. This is compelling to me enough that I basically always use this when I'm using React. <laughs> <laughs>